In this second half of our video, we're going to see if we can make this black and white layer uh, fix the color layer uh, shadow problem, and we'll then see if we can roll back some of our changes. So let's see what we have. Uh, right now this black and white layer is on top of our color layer and it's in a normal blend mode. Now when you switch to a different blend mode you're going to get a different result. So let's go ahead and just jump into here, make it blue to where it says dissolve here in blue and I'm just going to cycle down here and you'll see uh, you might find one that you like. Like for example the multiply might be exactly what you want. Uh, you, you have a whole bunch of different ones you can kind of jump through. Some of them are going to act differently than others and some of them would be crazy um, some of them would make it way too bright so uh, the one that I liked the most when moving through these was the pin light ended up um, or soft light ended up working the best let's see if we can go back to soft light alright so you've got this soft light uh, sometimes pin light looks good but this one no definitely not and you can also change some of these other settings. You can go down here and say, I'm going to make it the be the brightness of it. And you see how luminosity affects this in a different way as well. Um, but what I'm getting here is I'm not getting the, the brightness that I want. I want it to be a little more bright. So um, I want to keep it in soft light. And what we're going to do is see if we can use our original image to make it to where the contrast isn't so crazy. So we're going to take our original layer and I'm going to go ahead and just do a drag duplication of it. This original copy I'm going to put on the very top layer by dragging it up and if you click somewhere where there isn't words and isn't picture you're going to bring up the blend options for this layer. Okay. So the blend options basically we can make it interact differently depending on how we uh, affect this bottom here where where it says blend if gray and you can move this value over and you see how it's it's definitely looking odd at the moment but these little dials are not set up to just work by themselves okay you wanna change them to where they separate now right now these are together I move this one together I can move this one together Right, and what I want to do here is separate these. So if you pull this up, I'm going to bring mine up near 190, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and click it, and now I can separate them. So you see how this works. And you see now I'm, I'm slowly dialing those uh, brights back in. Okay, so I'm not losing my contrast, but I'm keeping my dark. Okay, so you see I put this down more. This is affecting a lot of my midtones because I'm cutting those away. In the layer below. So I'm going to put this in at 192. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So let's take a look at what that did. Let's turn off the eye. You see, really, really crazy. And then now it looks more natural color, but still HDR ish. Uh, the one thing I didn't like though, and you might have noticed, is that my eyes ended up disappearing. So in that, that case, I want to go ahead and add a mask to this layer and I'm going to zoom in on these eyes and I'm going to paint some uh, black I'm going to turn on my opacity really low on my brush so I can slowly paint the eyes out basically revealing the eyes below to brighten those eyes back up okay uh, not a whole lot of work needed there and then we'll zoom back out and so you can kind of see how that is definitely making a difference there All right. So after this, um, I did happen to notice something that was unique to this picture. It might not happen in your picture, but in mine, I was getting this double line here along the arms, all right? And that's just not what we want. So what I wanted to do was make yet another duplicate of my original um, image. And this one here, this one, we're going to call it fix arms because that's where I, what I need to do here. And for this one, we are going to basically use the original colors to create it. So I'm going to add an alt mask by holding down the alt key and pressing my mask button. And that will get me a black mask. Then I can jump over to my brushes and choose white. And I'm going to use a very low opacity brush. And I'm using a tablet, and my tablet is uh, very soft, and it 
has um, uh, pressure sensitivity assigned to it. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that pressure's on. And I'm just going to slowly walk around these arms to see if I can um, fix this little area here. So it's definitely taking a few strokes to make it happen. But I just want to keep it blurry. Okay, let it be blurry. And if some of the original blue or the original skin tone uh, flows through. It's going to be so minute just on the very edge in a blurry area. It shouldn't make too much of a difference. So I'm just kind of painting that original picture back in along the edge. And I'm going to do it over here as well. Okay, because I just want it to be nice and soft. And then her hand as well, the edge of the hand, just want to keep that nice and blurry. Okay, alright, let's take a look at that again from a distance here. And you can see this is our um, uh, final completed version. If you wanted to showcase it to somebody, you could just drag this original layer to the top and then you could just turn that eye off and on and see how far we came in creating this Adobe Camera Raw HDR image from a single raw file. And that's it for this video.